Your new garden building needs an appropriate base for installation. For this corner summer house, we're installing onto a gravel surface, so we're going to use our pressure treated timber porter base, available for nearly all of our garden buildings. Your base needs to be firm and level. For this building, you will need an area at least 207cm by 313cm. You will also need to ensure you have at least a 2 foot gap around the entire perimeter of the building for ease of installation and to allow a wood treatment to be applied later. All of the components and fixings are supplied with the building, so all you'll need is some basic tools. For this corner summer house, you'll need a posi drive screwdriver, a cutting tool, a step ladder, a hammer, a tape measure and a drill with a 2mm and a 10mm drill bit. You will need at least two people to install this building and we would recommend using safety gloves when handling the panels. Using your instructions, check all parts against the parts list and ensure that all pieces are present and correct before beginning construction. Each wall panel will have two transport blocks attached to the bottom frame which will need to be removed with a hammer. Begin by laying the door panel down and slide the double doors into the opening with the master door on the right hand side. Align the door hinge between the frame and the door as shown. Use a 2mm drill bit to create pilot holes for the screws. Pre-drilling is essential to not only protect your timber from splitting, but it also makes construction significantly easier. This should be done at all times. Use the screws provided to secure the hinge in place, and repeat this for all six. Once complete, flip the door panel over to fit the lock. Align the lock over the keyhole before pre-drilling each screw hole. Secure the lock with four black screws. Place the small tower bolts at the top and bottom of the slave door and pre-draw through each hole. Secure each of these in place with four small screws. You will then need to use a 10mm drill bit to create a retaining hole in the top and bottom of the door frame. Start with the solid sheet board or tongue and groove floor and position it on top of your base. You can now place one of the front window panels on top of your floor so that the framing rests on the board. Move the door panel into position on the angle as shown and secure the two together by pre-drilling at the top, middle and bottom of the frame and affixing with screws. Repeat this for the opposite front window panel, ensuring that the panels are joined tightly together. Slide the rear left panel into position as shown and secure in a similar manner, with screws at the top, middle and bottom of the framing. Insert the long side framing against the end of the side panel as shown. This needs to be secured in the same manner by pre-drilling and then attaching to the panel framing with screws at the top, middle and bottom. You can now place the last panel between the back and side window. Secure it on both sides with screws into the top, middle and bottom of the framing. You can now attach the door handles to the door panel. Line the handles up before pre-drilling through each screw hole. Attach each handle with four screws. For the ridge beam, place an L bracket over the end of the bar as shown. Pre-drilling and securing it with two screws. Repeat this for the other end. Place the shorter framing batter on top of the front left window panel and secure down into the framing below at each end and the middle. Place the longer framing batten on the opposite back wall, securing in the same manner with screws into the frame below. Align the ridge beam between these two walls, level with the centre framing. Make sure the beam is flush with the top of the panel before screwing in through the L bracket as shown. Position the roof panel over the assembled walls. Secure it with screws down through the boards into the framing below. Make sure to also secure the roof board down into the ridge beam at even increments. You can now begin work on the side shed portion of the building. Make sure you have a firm and level base to support the floor before placing it down on top. Ensure it is flush against the side of the summer house and at both ends before securing it with long screws diagonally into the summer house framing as shown. Lay the door panel down before inserting the two doors in the opening. Place the hinges over the joint, aligning the screw holes with the framing nails at the top and bottom of the door. Use a 2mm drill bit to pre-draw through the hinge holes before securing it in place with screws. Repeat this for all four hinges. Place the door cover trims over the joint before securing them with screws into the master door, leaving a gap in the middle for the lock. Position the completed door panel over the front of the floor making sure it is flush against the summer house. Pre-drill all holes and then secure with screws at the top, middle and bottom as shown. Repeat this for the back panel as well. The side panel can now be inserted and secured on both sides with three screws each. Place the gable top over the side panel, making sure that the tongue and groove boards interlock on the outer cladding. 
Screw through the framing up into the gable top as shown to fix it in place. Lay your roof panel down before placing the roof framing across the front and back of the panel as shown. Making sure to pre-drill, secure the framing in place. Lift the roof panel into position so that the framing locks over the front and rear panels, securing with screws down through the bores into the framing below. Additionally, secure the roof board into the side of the summer house. You can now secure the walls of the summer house and side shed to the floor. Pre-drill down through the framing in line with the floor bearers and screw into place around the entire building. To felt your roof, roll out the included felt and measure using a tape measure. Using a cutting tool, cut the felt until you have the required strips and roll them up for ease of movement. For this roof you will need one strip 1,500mm long, three strips 3,020mm long and two strips 4,020mm long. Start with the back corner of the roof, laying the 1,500mm long strip diagonally across so that it follows the same angle as the door panel. Make sure that there is an overhang of at least 50mm at the back corner. Secure the felt along the edge as shown in 100mm increments with felt tacks and a hammer. Roll the second section of felt out at the same angle, making sure to overlap the first felt section. Secure this along the overlapped edge as shown. Refer to the instructions for the felt strip order until you have reached the front of the building and the roof is fully covered. Fasten the felt to the edges of the roof with additional tacks as shown. When you reach the corner angles, use a cutting tool to slice the felt, allowing the corners to overlap and tack in position around the entire building. Pre-drill the trims using a 2mm drill bit. Place the front trims over the joint between the door panel and the window side. Use screws to secure it at the top, middle and bottom. The right, left and back corner trims need to be attached in the same method. For the fascia boards, pre-drill the holes at each end and in the middle to prevent splitting. Place these over the tacked felt, ensuring the board is flush with the roof edge. Attach the roof framing with screws and repeat for the entire building. Any excess felt from the roof can now be cut away using a cutting tool for a neat and clean finish. A turn button also needs to be attached to the top and bottom of the slave door. Position the button over the door gap and secure in place using a screw. The rear and side roof gaps are filled using additional framing. Position the longer framing piece under the rear left fascia board so that it butts up against the roof framing above. Secure this with screws at each end and the middle as shown. Repeat this for the front side roof gap using the shorter framing bar. The rain guards need to be placed over the top of each window as well as the doors. Place the guard over the top frame, then making sure to pre-drill, attach to the wall panel with screws at each end. Place a framing block on the inside of each of the side shed doors as shown. Secure this down into the framing below at each end. On the other side, align the pad bolt lock over the framing, making sure to pre-drill all holes before securing with screws. Repeat this for the catch plate on the slave door. On the top and bottom of the slave door, fix another framing block in place with screws through the front of the door. You can then attach the last two turn buttons. You can now remove the protective plastic coating from the windows of your summer house. Using a sharp knife or cutting tool, score around the entire edge of the window frame. Use the blade to remove a section of the coating from the corner, allowing you to remove the full sheet. Repeat this for the inside too, as well as the doors. Your corner summer house with side shed is now complete. For more information on this summer house range, please visit merciagardenproducts.co.uk.